for, write it down, it stands for trust. How many of you know if you're going to be on a team, there's got to be some level of trust? Now, I watched our worship team up here this morning. And you've got, uh, you've got uh, Pastor Craig back here playing the, the bass. I, I could put it on and be Pastor Craig, but I'm not tall enough. I think the bass is actually taller than I am. And, and then you've got, you've got Sebastian over here on the guitar, and you've got Joseph over here on the guitar, and you've got Gina over here on the keyboards, and you've got Andre up there leading worship, and you've got the whole choir over there singing, and, and was, it, was it Alan that was playing drums? we got Alan in here beating the, the brains out of our drums, and all of these guys independently doing their thing that they do, their gift, whether it's keyboards, guitars, whatever it is, but they are working together, and they're trusting, they're following his lead. They're, they're watching what he's doing. They're watching the, the keyboard. They're, they're listening. The choir's doing the same thing. Listen, I want you to understand, whether it's a worship team or it's a homeless team or it's a football team, it doesn't make any difference. If you're going to have a team, you've got to build trust with each other. One of the missing ingredients in most churches today is this issue of trust. We come into church, we don't trust people. Listen, do I dare ask this question? I'm going to ask it. How many people in this room, at some point or another, in your walk with Christ, at some place, in some church, may have been this one or another one, that you have been bruised, wounded, or injured in church? Let me see your hands if you've ever been. Raise them really, really high. All right. Some of you've got scars to prove it. Some of us love to show our scars. Come here, I want to show you where they almost killed me. It almost becomes a trophy. How many of you know that the Lord can heal the hurt? He can heal the wound. He can heal the injury. And how many of you know that you and I have got to work at it to make sure that we're building trust with other people? Listen, I know this when I stand up in front of you on a Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning when I stand up, I see people I've never seen before. They don't know me and I don't know them. And at some level, they're going to have to trust me and I'm going to have to trust them. In order to deliver the message, to get the goods from the gospel across to them, there's got to be trust. It is the emotional glue that holds us together. God wants us to learn how to trust one another. And we've got to build trustworthiness between each other. Amen? Uh, the E. Would you write this one down? The E stands for empathy. Now that's a kind of a fancy word but that word empathy literally ties together with the word sympathy. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. The Bible says live in harmony with one another and be sympathetic. How many of you have ever heard somebody's story and it touched your heart and you felt sorry for them? How many of you that's ever happened to you? That's empathy. That's sympathy. I believe God wants us to learn how to enter into other people's world. Listen, every one of us in this room have a deep need to have your feelings validated. You need somebody in your life who, who goes, listen, you're not that weird. You're okay. I've been there. I've had that. I had that sickness three weeks ago. You're going to live through it. You're not going crazy. Listen, I was there last year. Somebody who validates the frustrations, the feelings, the fears, the failures, the fatigue in your life. And that's what empathy does. If we're going to build teams here at Bethel, we're going to have to learn how to get into each other's work. Let me give you a quick example. Yesterday I had a, a service technician who had an appointment to be at my house at 11 o'clock. And so uh, we made the appointment and, and uh, I'm on my way home to meet him there with my cell phone friends. And he said, Mike, this is Brian. And he said, I'm just going to let you know that I'm running an hour behind. And, and, and the first thing I said was, oh, that, that might be a problem. And uh, he said, oh, well, if it's a problem, we can reschedule. And boy, I just sensed the Holy Spirit said to me, don't make it a problem. It's not a problem. Make it work. How many of you have the Holy Spirit following you around? How many of you ever get conked over the head sometimes? And I said, okay, I said, Brian, this is not a problem. Head this way, get here as quick as you can, and it'll be fine. We're going to make this happen. He pulled up at my house, and I went outside to meet him. And instantly I knew that the Lord wanted me to try to develop some trust with him and to try to speak some things into his life. And I knew the only way I could do that was by building a, a somewhat of a relationship in the 45 minutes he was going to be there. I had to show the man some empathy. He jumped out of the truck. He said, he said, Mike, I'm so sorry. I'm running late. I said, Brian, no pressure, dude. You're fine. You're good. This is fine. We're going to get this done. We're in good shape. Heidi Ho, I said, I'm your helper. I'm here to help, baby. Listen, if you've got something broke at your house, don't call me, okay? Because <laughs> if it's broke, 
If it's not broke, it will be broke when I get through with it, okay? Because I, I just don't, I don't have the gift. And so, so I, I said, what do we do? And he said, well, we got to do this. And so he grabbed his tools and we went around the side of the house and he starts working. And, and uh, he, uh, he took the piece back to his, his truck and he's working on it and it's not working. It's like really broke. I don't even know what I'm talking about. And, and he's trying to get it apart and he said, oh, he said, I'm so upset. He said, I should have brought my other truck. I, I need a 716 inch wrench. And being the handyman that I am, I said, no problem, Ryan. I have one of those. I don't even know every man is going to admit whether he has one or not that he has a 716 inch wrench. He knows where it's at. He used it 10 minutes ago. So I start towards the house and I go in the garage and I'm praying to Jesus. I don't even know what a 716 inch wrench looks like. I don't know. Probably should have one, and if we don't have one, could you make one in my toolbox right now? Because I told Ryan I had one, and I don't want to be a liar. And I looked at my toolbox, can't find it, it's not in there. And so I said, Well, I, mean, I said, well, Let me go to the house. I got a toolbox in the house, let me go to the house. And I go to the house, and I'm going 7 16th inch in the name of Jesus. And I said, and I go over, and here's this whole box of these things. And I, I pick them up, and I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, why are the numbers the same color as the wrench? Because I can't read this. Is that the 9 or the 11? You know, I'm just like, I'm going, Jesus, please. And finally, finally, I found the 7 16th inch wrench, and I grabbed that thing, and I marched outside. I said, Brian, gotcha. I said, what do we do with it? He said, we put it right here. So we stood out there together. He's sweating. I mean, it's behind me. You know, it was hot outside yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. He's sweating. I'm sweating. I had just left men's ministry breakfast. Had to come back here to preach last night. I'm sweating so bad I need another shower. There's no time for shower. So last night, they got to smell what ministry smells like. <laughs> He takes that wrench, he starts taking this thing apart, and he's working on it, and I'm standing out, and I'm praying, oh God, help him, help him, Lord, you know, and he gets it all done, and, and then I, I just start looking for an open door to put Jesus in. And I got to talking about Jesus, and I got talking about the Lord, and I got talking about how God is so good, and finally he stopped, and he looked at me and said, what religion are you? <laughs> I said, well, I'm a Christian. And he said, well, what brand are you? I'm a whirlpool. What brand are you? Presbyterian or Pentecostal? I thought, well, at least he's in the peas. We're in good shape here. I said, I'm Pentecostal. And he said, I'm from Kentucky. We're all Pentecostals in Kentucky. And we started talking and connecting. And I went around inside the house and we sweated together. And we worked together. He needed some water. I went and got him some water. And he needed this. And we got that for him and helped him carry his stuff out to the truck. And when we were done, he stuck his hand out. He said, Mike, I just want to say that I have really enjoyed our conversation today. And if anything else breaks, call me so we can talk some more. <laughs> And I do, I did with him what I do with every service tech that comes to my house. I took him by the hand. I said, sir, I'm praying for you that God will bless your business, that God will give you favor, that God will bless you with so much work you won't know what to do. And they all leave smiling when I say that to them. And I pray that prayer over them. And, and he got back in the truck and I walked in the house and I was a sweaty mess. And I'm walking in the house and I'm going, God, thank you for helping me not only preach about this, but doing this. God helped me get in this man's world and have empathy for him and care for him. How many of you know if we're going to be a team, we're going to have to get in each other's lives. We're going to have to learn how to do that. Now let me tell you one of the ways we can do this is by asking questions. I want you to turn to your neighbor real quick and just say to him, how you doing? Ask him and say, how you doing? And most of them are going to go, fine, I'm fine. Occasionally you get somebody who needs three hours worth of counseling, but usually people just say, fine, fine. And so you ain't got very far, so you ask them again. Now don't turn to them and say, so how are you doing? You know, I just asked you, they got to ask you again. They're going to look at you and go, are you deaf? I just told you, I'm fine. But you say, how are you doing? You no, know, Mike, how are you doing? Mike says, I'm fine. I mean, no, no, dude, really. Like, I mean, really, how's things going? How's life like treating you? Mike's good. So, so Mike, like, what's like the at the top of your pile? What's at the top of your pile? What's like number one on your list? 
is. Now, what I'm doing, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that a wise man draws things out. How many of you know that if we're going to be empathetic with each other, and this works in marriages, this works with your boss, this works with your children, this works with your neighbor, this works with people on a team here in church, we've got to be empathetic with each other. Amen? A is accommodate. Would you write down A? T is trust. E is empathy. A is accommodate. Now I want you to do me a favor. Everybody look around the room and I want you to pick out three weird people. Don't point at them. Don't, don't stare at them. They're going to know. They're going to know if you stare at them. Just look around and when you've got three weird people in your sights, just go, this one. Yep, 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 there's, yep, yep. Yep, from my vantage point, three's not enough. Hey, maybe I understand this. That's... The Bible tells us that we have to learn how to accommodate each other. How many of you know that some of those same people that you think are weird, they think you are weird? <laughs> so I have a list of people who would like to see you after this service. I'm getting text messages right now. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 says, Be faithful, loving, and easy to get along with. How many of you know we're not always easy to get along with? Now, how many of you know we have to be able to cut each other some slack? Amen. There's all kinds of different personalities in this room. There are the sanguine people. These are the life of the party. My wife has got a lot of sanguine in her. I married her because I've never been the life of the party, but I've always wanted to be the life of the party. So, so I married my wife because she's the life of the party. And, and sanguines, they can walk into a total room of strangers, don't know anybody, and within five minutes they know everybody. And, and, and sanguines are so fun to hang out with and you'll just be having the time of your life until they find somebody more interesting and then they're gone. They're kind of like a butterfly. They're all over the place. Then they're melancholics. I'm melancholic. I, I'm melancholic off the chart. Melancholics think a lot, think way too much. They tend to be a little creative and a, a little uh, technically minded to the point of being strange sometimes. And uh, melancholy is one of the biggest faults that melancholies have is they never see the glass half full. They always see the glass half empty. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So if, you, if you've got melancholy in you, you probably need counseling. Oh, damn it. You need somebody to lift you up a lot, pull you up a lot. And, and the truth is that, that that's, that's a little strange if you're not melancholic. And then there are the phlegmatics and phlegmatics kind of kind of roll up in a ball and you have to push them through life. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But don't push too hard because they will dig their heels in and you nor them will ever move again. Their favorite song is, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. You probably know somebody like that. And then there are the calorics. And the calorics, uh, they are the people who make things happen. They are the business owners. They are the directors. They are the CEOs. And, and the great people. They make the world go around. The only problem is, if you get in their way, they'll kill you, leave you dead on the side of the road because you have now got in front of them and they're trying to get to a goal. So never, never impede the movement of a caloric or you could die before the sun goes down. <laughs> The truth is, every one of us in this room is a little bit of all of those personalities. You've got your own little strange little mixture going on. Now listen, here's what I have found out. We are all strange. We are all weird. We are all dysfunctional in our own sweet, strange little way. And what we've got to do in the body of Christ, instead of sitting over here and judging the other people, we've got to get into their world and we've got to learn to accommodate, make room for their personality. And if they do the same for us, hello. We can be a team. We've also got to accommodate for each other's faults. How many of you know you've got faults in your life? And I know we've got some real holy people in here, and you're just like, you know, perfect in every way, but that, that itself is a fault. <laughs> you understand that? And we all have faults in our life, and we've got to allow the Lord to help us. Ephesians 4 2 says, Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. How many of you know that God wants us to learn to love each other? God wants us to learn to work together. M, write it down. T stands for trust. E for empathy. A for accommodate. M stands for mission. We're on the same mission. I tell people all the time when they come visit our church, they'll say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm taking my church. I say, let's kick the tire. Just take it for a test drive. And see what you think, you know. It's got a few dings in it, you know. The transmission's a little rough sometimes, but hey, it gets us where we're going. That's what I usually tell people. Bethel, basically, in one line, we're about Jesus. We love Him with all of our hearts. We preach Him straight up. We want the world to know who He is. We, our lives have been changed because of Him. We want everybody else's life to be changed. So if you love Jesus and you love telling people about Jesus, you might like this place because that's kind of who we are. That's our mission. We're on a mission. 
How many of you know that as a church, we've got to be on the same page, going in the same direction, be on the same mission, and when we do that, listen, it makes it all happen. Listen, your ministry might be putting donuts out. That's part of the mission. We've got to feed these people so they don't pass out because Pastor Mike preaches so long. Amen. <laughs> 